Welcome back, everybody. It is season two. This is Minister Jay Renee, and you're watching Real Talk. And I listen, I um I did something new. I got a Twitter account. So if you guys want to hit me up on uh, uh my Twitter, it is Jay Renee Real Talk, and you can uh interact with me there, you know, give me uh your comments, uh questions. If you want to interact with me that way, I will be glad to answer, do the best I can. Um, but I am so glad that you are back with me this uh, session. Today, we are going to talk about LGBTQ, and it is time to talk about suicide. So I, I want to go into this because um, I know on season one, um, I talked about uh, the harm you know, that is being done. Listen, God has been good to us, and we should always be good to people just because God has been good to us, not because people deserve to be good too, but because God has been good to us. Ooh, I had to shoot that out there. I had to get that in there really quick. On season one, I was discussing how, um, you know, we may say things that we might not think is harmful, but it is harmful. So uh, I believe Pastor just uh, described it this way. Harm is, you know, we unintentionally uh, it's an unintentional um, hurt. And then there's hurt when we're just being downright mean. And so we shouldn't do that because God has been good to us. He has blessed us. So um, and last and last season, I kind of uh, talked about some of the, de of the definitions um, that or the terminology that we are moving to. What I have found out... Um, is that the, the, the rate for suicide is just raising. And so I wanted to take my time, break it down. So guess what? This time I got some slides for everybody so you can kind of keep up with me because I know I can get excited and start talking real fast. Uh, so this time, but we need to understand the terminology. We need to understand, you know what? Because guess what? They're changing laws. Um, they're, they're changing things around us in our environment, and I was not aware of how in-depth the, the terminology is now. And hey, they're putting this in the law. They're starting to put this on applications. So I just want to make uh, the, my church family, the body of Christ, or anybody viewing, I just want to make you aware of that. So, so before that, so today, um, I, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to put a little twist on it, because I'm going to do me this season. Come on, somebody. I was trying to bring all of this in, and it was just so much information. I'm breaking it down this, this season, and I'm going to talk about uh, divorce. I am going to talk about some of the heavy topics, like divorce, but what about the divorcee? Come on, somebody. Um, sometimes divorce people, they get stuck. So um, I'm going to do a whole lot. We're going to go real, and I am going to do that. But again, if you want to say anything to me, hey, check me out on Twitter, okay? So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead, and I know you could probably see um, the LGBTQ. It's got all of the colors. Hey, watch, watch all of uh, this terminology, and we'll see why that, that, that is actually their emblem that I found in my research to do that. And some of this, I've, I've done some research. Uh, so let's go to the slides, and let's talk about, let's, let me show you the terminology. Wow. <laughs> you know, based on I know uh, we, termally, we traditionally... Uh, address gender as male or female. So here is how um, it is changing for us and how it is addressed in the LGBT community, LGBTQIA. Um, so first in our gender, we have the biological sex, which is about biology, anatomy, and chromosomes. Then gender itself is a cultural product of a complex set of symbolic practices that mark most of us female, male or female, right? So gender, gender identity is the gender the person knows oneself to be interior, interiorly, inside, all right. Transgender is, is those whose self-understanding of gender is consistent with their biological sex or gender assigned at birth. Um, and then the non-binary is any identity that does not fall into the male-female gender binary, okay? 
So continuing with the gender, sex, they're saying, is a physical act defined as broadly or narrowly as you like. It's not gender. And then um, sexuality is what gives birth to the physicality of sex and compromises a vast number of elements, including but not limited to our sexual and romantic orientation. So that, that's how gender is now defined. Um, and, and, and hey, everybody, I'm telling you um, that this is like real. This is happening, I don't know, uh, because school has generally been out has been out because uh, you know we're in COVID-19, but now that school is getting ready to go in, um, our teachers are are literally considered some of these genders, and so please be aware of that. Please please be aware, um, you know. And um, I, and I want to go ahead and say this, um, you know, because I've talked to several kids, uh, they don't understand it, and. So you're, you're probably going to, you know, for traditional uh, children, you know, you're going to probably have to help them understand um, this kind of thing or understand uh, what their teacher is kind of saying. Okay, I'm just going to leave that. So let us do this. So now I'm going to define or use the terminology that I found that LGBTQ uh, IA uses. Okay. So we're going to start with cisgender. Cisgender is identifying with the gender assigned at one's birth. So they, uh, yeah, they identify their female or male. Heterosexual is attraction to the opposite gender, assuming there are only two. Hey, this is what I found, okay? Um, cishet is shorthand for cisgender and heterosexual and they have traditional, okay? Then the next is sexual identity, determines who one is uh, attracted to, if attracted at all, exists on a spectrum and can be fluid. So, and then gender under LG, the LGBTQIA, I found um, to mean this, it is, here, gender here is identity determining one's gender, male, female, something in between or neither, and is determined by the person, uh, exists on a spectrum and can be fluid. So, um, well, let me just, I'm gonna keep on going before I jump because you know how I do. So now um, for queer, queer previously a derogatory term, but now used as an umbrella term to describe those who identify as anything other than cishet includes, but is not limited to, lesbian, gay, bisexual, pansexual, asexual, transgender, non-binary, or et cetera. Okay, so now we're dealing with this whole big spectrum um, of, of terminology that I know half of us are most people in the church uh, may not want to know or try to remember, but it is important because we have LGBTQ Christians. And um, just not to, you know, we want to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Listen, um, again, like I said, I, I'm, I'm not trying to address the world. I care about, I care about the world, but I can't change the world. Only Christ can. And the way that happens is when we bring them into the church. But people, we can't win people by hate. We win them by love. And that is what I really uh, love to point out in these topics. Um, and so um, that is why I'm addressing this. And now all of these things, and I, I just want to say that there are some young people who are really struggling um, with their identity, um, how they feel about themselves. Um, and so what I have done for this segment is, you know, uh, life, life is critical and I care and we have to care. And I, in this segment, I want to reach out to those who might be considering suicide. You know, um, 
we kind of brush it off, but people, and especially young people, take this to heart and they fall into a dark place. And, and I know that you're reading about all these young people committing suicide. Hey, look, if this is one part of it, I just want to put up a, um, the Trevor Project. And the, treasure, the Trevor Project offers a lifeline to young people who are um, considering suicide and they are in this place of, you know, darkness in their life. Um, so they offer a 24-hour lifeline, and the number is 1-866-488-7336. Again, this is the Trevor Project. And if you know someone, some young person, hey, listen, I know adults who are struggling with this, who have this bottled up on the inside, who don't want to come out because they don't want to be cast out, they don't uh, want to be rejected, they want to be loved. And, you know, we love people for who they are. Why do we have to wait till they have to tell us, you know? We, we want people to be who they are or who they identify themselves as or however we may term, you know, uh, however we may say that. But this is important. And I, and I do want them to know about this, about the Trevor Project. I, I took this on, man, I'm, I'm telling you what, because this is so critical. We blow it off and we call, we, you know, we say, hey, you know, we say a lot of negative things, but now in this hour and this time, it is, it's time to be sensitive to people. We, we, we've got to love people. And so I just wanna say, let's be tender in how we approach people. I mean, because you know what? There's people we meet in the grocery store. Um, um, we meet people all over. And if they need prayer, will they accept prayer for somebody they know that rejects them, that looks down on them, that judges them uh, by their lifestyle, uh, by their clothes? Listen, you know, it's, it's time to reach the real world, the world. These, everybody is precious to the Lord. The LGBTQIA community is no different for those people who separate it in their minds, separate them like they're some other kind of people. They're people just like everybody else. And they have a right to be introduced to the living God, especially when they're in trouble and there is no way out. We know Jesus is the way and that Jesus will help. And that Jesus does love them and we have to express love to them. I think in season one, uh, one of my friends told me that someone, you know, people tell him on a daily basis that um, God does not love you because you're gay. Oh my goodness. Y'all, I am still floored by that statement and that was last season. And so I, I have been on this thing not to, uh, to, to really be an advocate for loving people. So I, I tell you what, we're gonna, we're gonna continue this segment, but you know what, we're gonna take a small break and then we're gonna come right back and we're gonna finish up LGBTQ, okay? So just hang out with me for a minute and enjoy uh, this little break and then we're gonna get into some more deep good stuff that I have for LGBTQ, all right? Hey, call somebody, tell them, share this link, Share this because I got some real good news for those in the LGBTQIA community and uh, those that are in Christ and those that are curious about Christ. All right, so we'll be right back. It's a celebration. The Deal Maker, Kevin Willis, is celebrating 10 years, a decade, of servicing our community with Deals on Wheels at Toyota of Louisville, 6514 Dixie Highway. He's the number one high-volume car dealer. Call him today so he can create you a deal of a lifetime at 502-408-0888. 10 years, Kevin Willis at Toyota of Louisville. 10 years of finding you deals, of getting you done. That's Kevin Willis, the deal maker with Toyota of Louisville. 
6514 Dixie Highway. Be sure to check out the deal maker on social media. Friend him on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter. It's the deal maker, Kevin Willis, at Toyota of Louisville. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is Real Talk, and you are with Minister Jay Renee. You know, we just love that. I love that. Um, but my name is Janine Renee for those who are new. Um, so I, let me go ahead and say that. So I'm Minister Janine Renee. I love both my names, but Jay Renee sounds like I like it, right? So, but we are in LGBTQ. We just came out of uh, people that you might know who might be considering suicide or even if you are considering suicide. So we just came out of that. But I, I want to, I want to come to a moment of some real talk because that's what this is all about, right? Real talk. So I, want, I would like to show you something from John 1. John 1, we're recognizing the creator because the creator knows us. And so without our creator, the word, Jesus Christ, we cannot fully know ourselves. So, you know, I am Minister J. Renee. But what does that mean? Who am I? So in order to find out all about me, I have to go to the one who created me. So, so I'm going to start with uh, verse 1, okay? If you would, so I'm in uh, the book of John, the gospel according to John, if you want to follow along, in chapter 1, and it reads this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. He was in the world, and, through the, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Uh oh, 12 and 13 says this, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right or power to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or of a husband's will, but born of God. That is great news. That is great news. Because let me tell you, Whenever we want to know our purpose, why we were made, we have to go to the one who created us. And right now where you're sitting, you might be in the darkness, but I am so glad that Jesus Christ is the light of men. Because when you come to him and you spend time and you get to know him, oh my, wow, wow, listen, it is the, listen, you'll tell me, after spending this, and I'll tell you what, after spending a year seeking Jesus Christ, I bet you you'll know a difference in yourself. I bet you that the darkness will run and flee from you. And I bet you you'll see life in such a beautiful way. So I don't know if you are thinking about suicide because you can't figure this thing out because you don't know who you are. Guess what? Or don't know. I don't, I don't know how to say that. I think that we all struggle with who we are and what our purpose is in life. And we might know what it is uh, in 15 years, but after that, it might be something different. We are always growing and becoming more. We are much greater than what we are right now. We are much greater than what we give our credit, ourselves credit for. Jesus Christ has made us that way. Oh my goodness, and it's such a good thing. Um, Jesus Christ, okay, I said that. He is the creator of life, and his life brings light to mankind. It is in this light that we see ourselves as we really are. So depression, grief, re and rejection can bring us to a dark place. It, 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 they, are, they are things that happen to us, um, or things that didn't happen for us, it can bring us into dark places. Like everyone goes through that. That's why I said, yes, I am. 
I am talking to everyone. I, I don't want to single people out, not because they're not special, but because God has created everyone. And so everyone has this same thing. So I want to tell you, wait a minute, let me make sure I got everything right there before I go down. Uh-huh. We are his creation. So Jesus, as Christians, as Christians, Jesus is our creator. We are his creation. Creation has to go to the creator to discover the fullness of who we are. No being, no person can be ashamed of the beauty that Christ has made, has made you. All right? I, okay. So, so then I can tell you, if we go back to my slides now that I, I nicely prepared for you, um, you are, you are unique, you have value, you are valuable. So let me jump on unique really quick. Um, we don't realize, and listen, I'm going to tell you right now, I know I have been guilty of this. You know, when I see someone doing something, I, okay, that must be the way you do it. That must be you have, but you are created uniquely the bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made so you are unique so you can't look at yourself and say hey i'm supposed to be more like that or people pick on you because you're not like them well yay if you're not like them celebrate hallelujah and then you have value you are not garbage you are not trash and hey i know how when because i've been told you are garbage uh, really? You know, I was stunned, but knowing, I know I'm not garbage, but I had to struggle with that because sometimes it depends on who tells you that, right? So I'm telling you, you are not garbage. You have value. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. So if nobody else in the world was here, just you, he would still die for you, okay? Because you have value. You are valuable, you, you are beneficial. You have a purpose that contributes to the life, your life and the life of others. You may not know what it is right now, but if you stay with us, if you don't quit, if you don't give up, if you want to come into the lightness, guess what? You will find out, right? So now, if I go to my next slide, I'm going to tell you right now, look at the top. You are beautiful beautiful so be you to the fullest God will get you there you know if you just come to God and remain with him so he says you know um, I'll remain in you you remain in me. so my word so again when we look at John 1 it says in the beginning was the word so this is how we find Jesus Christ. It's, it's not a dream. It's not a prophecy. It's not a, a black ball. It's not a, we don't find Jesus in those places. We find Jesus Christ in his word. We get to know him by his word, the Bible. Come on, somebody, the Holy Bible. This is where we find and we spend time with Jesus. Have an attractiveness. Have a, a desire. I want to know you. So because I know that Jesus is real, I talk to him like I'm talking to you. And I, I just say, Lord, I want to know you more. You, you can't get enough of seeking God. Like, the more you want to know about him, the more you'll have of him. Oh, wee. Wait a minute. That made me feel good. Hold on. I'm going to calm down. I'm going to calm down. Right. I Listen, Jesus Christ is real. He is more real than anything you can see. And I, I know that. And the more that sometimes, you know, I just wish I could say, here, look. <laughs> but every person has to seek Jesus Christ for themselves. But you know what? You can say, Jesus, I want to know you. I want you to live in me and I want to live in you for real this time. Because real quick, people can come into the church, but that doesn't mean they've come into Christ. So what we're supposed to do is, because we're in Christ, we all come into the church. So when people come in the church who have never met Christ, 
can sense his realness and who he is. And we can't take prejudice of those seeking him. We are to show them, to express his love to them. So it's not our love, it's the love of Jesus that we have to express. So beloved of the Lord, we have to now start moving ourselves out the way because there's something greater at hand. There's something greater. And that greater is Jesus Christ. So when we move ourselves out the way and love, like we say, with the love of the Lord, we cannot uh, do that and be um, hateful, be rude, disrespectful, and say that we're in the love of the Lord. Please, it is time in this hour, in this hour like never before, the saints have to dig in. Listen, right now people don't even want to come back into the church house. And please don't tell me, oh, because I don't want to get sick. Well, you are in Walmart. Walmart is jam-packed and half those people don't even want to wear their mask. So you are in there shopping, you are at the malls, hey, you are out swinging it. So if you are one of those people, please don't tell me that, oh, you can't go into church, you'll just worship online at home. When the church opens, this is what we do. We come into ch church to encourage one another so that we, we don't give up. We, I love online church because, listen, if I ain't have nothing else, I want to hear my word. I Listen, I pull up my video every morning to hear my meditation uh, from the pastor. Oh, yes. You know what? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the more of the word that you hear, the more your faith begins to grow. You know what? I, there has not been one uh, morning meditation or powerful point to ponder that has not encouraged me. And again, I am a minister, but guess what? I am encouraged by hearing the word just like everybody else. Listen, when I get encouraged and when I get fooled and when I pour out, then someone else is encouraged. And that's how we do. So I'm inviting you to come into church whenever church opens. Have your mask. <laughs> Please have your mask. But bask in the presence because when we all come together, oh my goodness, there should be a presence of the Lord that you experience that is above none other. And when your heart is turned to the Lord, meaning, Father, in your heart, in your mind, you say, I am looking for you. Where are you? Save me. Look, you see all those? God is listening and waiting for you. What will you do? So I'm telling you in this season, real talk, we're going to real talk, and this is real talk. So you know what? If you want to reach out to me, again, you can hit me on Twitter at J Renee Real Talk. And I will be glad to respond to you. Um, and this is SSE Live TV. Please view. And I, there are so many wonderful shows on this broadcast. You can pick one out and still be full. So guess what? I will see you next time on Real Talk. God bless you all.